I did a video yesterday on how in certain ways we suspend our disbelief in sort of non-existent realities or realities that we don't actually live in normally and we enter into other realities. You know, there's the example of just watching a movie or reading a book or, you know, engaging in Saturday night fun at the local leather bar or whatever, you know, whatever it happens to be, you're stepping outside of your, your workaday reality, your everyday reality, and you're entering into another one. Um, now, there are degrees of this. For example, um, the, um, the one that I mentioned was uh, sexual fantasy. That, if you ask me, involves a great deal of participation of the people who are actually the object of that reality. In other words, if um, I'm going to you know, do something that's out of the ordinary sexually or whatever that is almost guaranteed to require a great deal of my own input. Um, I'm creating a great deal of it myself. If I were, however, to increase the input from the outside, i.e. engage in something similar to Plato's Cave or The Matrix, where virtually all of your reality, except for, you know, a little bit of your own addition, is outside coming at you. A reality is being presented to you, which you then react to. So we have a continuum here of realities that you've created and participate in, and realities that are created for you and are sort of offered for you to participate in. It's a question of emphasis. What's the origin of this reality? Did you create it, or is it something that's, is it some sort of reality that's being offered for you? Now, um, <clears throat> This leads me to the question, the interesting question, of overall, what position does that put me in when I'm evaluating all the possible realities out there? When I'm sort of saying, okay, there are different realities, okay, there's the general reality that we all live in, the general reality of countries, the clock, our jobs, um, time zones, languages that we all speak, the external reality that we all take for granted, um, the, the reality that we can all agree upon, there's that reality. What does it say about me when I'm trying to step back and look at it from the outside? I'm trying to distance myself and see this entire picture as it's something other than myself, or at least provisionally or temporarily step above this reality and look down upon it from a certain vantage point that other people don't necessarily have. It's like when... Um, uh, Morpheus and uh, Neo would talk to each other about the Matrix while they were still in the Matrix. They were in the Matrix, but they weren't of it. You know, they would plug themselves into this reality, they would act in that reality, but they were somehow separate from it, and this made them, in a certain sense, or it is implied, a certain sense gave them something of an advantage over all the other drones that were in the, uh, the Matrix. When you start to look at reality that way, what does that do to you? as the person who is examining everybody's reality from the outside. Um, <clears throat> I'm into life affirmation slash life denial. I originally came at that from Indian philosophy because India explores both polarities very exhaustively. Um, and it, it has struck me that almost every sort of attempt to engage in this kind of argument ends up being like that. It ends up being somewhat elitist, because you're stepping out of the matrix, you're stepping out of reality, and you're assuming reality is something that is coming at us from the outside, and you're sort of, in some sense, distancing yourself from direct participation in that reality, or at least direct emotional acceptance of that reality. You're somehow saying, okay, I'm, I want to look at our society as a whole from the outside and try and see it for what it really is, as opposed to what I want it to be. There's an elitism inherent in that. Um, Schopenhauer would say that life isn't worth living or something along those lines, and I guess Nietzsche would say, yes, it is worth living if you make it worth living. What is? What are both of those people saying? They're both saying that there is that there is a correct way to see life that nobody else can see. Now, that Kind of Nietzsche isn't really saying that because, again, he's into perspectivism, which kind of says there's a gazillion different uh, ways to look at everything, an infinite number of ways. But even that, when you when you look at it, when you employ things like Anacantavada or perspectivism, in a way you are stepping outside. You are stepping outside of reality. You're trying to see every possible point of view in in, uh, 
in, in reality. Um, and again, when I'm trying to look at how other people piece together their own various realities, in a sense, I'm doing that. I'm stepping out and I'm critiquing everybody else's version of reality. What's my, what does my reality become when, when I've done that? My reality, not everybody else's. What's my reality now that I'm out of it? Well, Nietzsche, of course, has the Ubermensch, which is hotly debated what the heck he meant by that. Um, <clears throat> and, uh, you know, the other side of the coin has, you know, various people who have discovered, certainly, that there's, you know, there is no value to existence. And, of course, you try and sell that idea to the broad mass of humans, and they just draw a blank. They don't get it. They, they seem to be out of the loop. The Matrix and Nietzsche and Schopenhauer and a lot of other philosophies hint at this kind of elitism. Um, hint at the separation of the people who can see things clearly from the people who can't. Um, would that be considered a dangerous pratfall? Actually coming to the conclusion that you're seeing things more clearly than others. Um, <clears throat> one of my favorite quotes about this, dealing with this, is from Nehru, Jawaharlal Nehru, the Prime Minister of India, uh, where he was discussing Indian society, and he says, in reality, Indian society is anarchy. Um, if you look at our cu culture and our civilization, our philosophies, we will discuss absolutely everything. Anything is up for grabs to be analyzed and critiqued. But you must obey the laws of caste, otherwise our civilization will implode. Because of this anarchic thought, we have to have a very rigid social hierarchy, or not even a hierarchy, just a very rigid social system. Uh, the very anarchy of our thinking is sort of demanding that we have a, a rigid sort of set of parameters by which we order our affairs as a society. Um, because if we're going to be that anarchic in our thinking, we've got to be very proper in our the way we live. Um, and That comes across as an apology for an unfair social system, doesn't it? Um, but, let's say then, you are now this sort of elite person who has stepped outside of the Matrix and is now outside looking into it. What do you do? Do you abolish the Matrix? <laughs> um, do, you know, does it make sense for us to drag all the prisoners out of Plato's cave and force them into the sunlight for their own good? Um, does it make sense uh, for us to sort of try and wake everybody else up? What if people want to be in the Matrix? What if they're okay with it? What if they want that steak that they've got on the end of their fork and it tastes really good and it's enough for them? What if they want their illusions? Is that... are they somehow... Um, are they somehow less than we are? Are they somehow not quite as developed or not quite as up there? I would say that no, they're not. It's This is simply a question of how, how some people are, how some people order their lives. They see outside, they take it as at face value, they see it all, they see the nine to five job, the, the, the public transit ride to work in the morning, come home in the evening, eat dinner, talk to your wife about what you did at work, uh, play with your kids in the evening, watch a bit of television, go to bed. That's my life and that is fine. I don't want anything else. Or perhaps it's not even that I don't want anything else, i.e. I want to keep it out. It's just nothing else catches my attention except for what's on the outside coming in. Whereas the, the Ubermensch that's, you know, the Superman that's implied to exist by movies like The Matrix or by Plato's Cave or even by Nehru's quote says that there are people who will see things clearly. But it's also implied that it might not be a good idea to abolish that um, groundedness that everybody else seems to have and seems to want and need. I don't know, that's, it's an elitist kind of thinking because if you, if you set yourself, if you put yourself in that position as a critique of, of everything, as a critique of reality itself, um, there is a certain sense in which I think a lot of people who start to do this get frustrated by the inability of the world to see things the way that they see it. 
and that there is a degree of elitism that is inherent in that, and that is kind of a pratfall, if you ask me. A certain clarity of thinking can lead to uh, the idea that you're somehow smarter than everybody else, that you see things clearly, that you know everybody else is stupid but you, uh, to, you know, to borrow a Homer Simpson's quote, everybody is stupid but me. Um, he says as he sets his house on fire by falling asleep with a cigar in his mouth. Um, <clears throat> and, you know, that's apt as well. You think that everybody else is stupid but you, and yet everybody else refuses to hear what you have to say, and you're left sort of... You, you may be left in a state of kind of rage against the human race. Why are you so stupid? Why can't you see things for what they are? I would say that's a... Um, that's a snare. Uh, thinking that you're above the herd, um, or that you're outside of the herd, or outside of the matrix looking in, thinking that that gives you some sort of um, superiority over the common run of humanity is not just a snare in that it's arrogant and it's not a nice way to see the 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 you know, common run, run of humanity. It's not a nice way to look at people. But it's also a snare for you. Because, okay, what if you do see things clearly? Does that make you fabulous? Does that make you smarter or better than everybody else? It's interesting how people who start to think like this, and I'm no exception. In fact, I'm probably a great illustration of this. Uh, I'm a very arrogant person, and I wish I wasn't. <laughs> um... But it's it's interesting that um, terrible snare that you hit when you think that you've discovered something fundamental about reality itself. It does kind of turn you into somebody who, or it, it, it there is the danger that it's going to make you think that you know as you walk down the street, <laughs> I'm so smart and everybody else is so dumb. Um, I hate to say this, but I have that feeling all the time, and I wish I didn't. Um, Elitism, I think, is a danger when you're critiquing and trying to understand um, all the various realities that we live in. And when you're sort of saying that my reality might be a little bit more accurate than everybody else's, <laughs> um, that too has problems. <laughs>